We have noticed a couple users that want to poke around under the hood or maybe replace their cases. Your case is made of resin. And that is great. It's a nice, smooth finish, but it's not great for some other material properties. One of which is um, the, the strength of the, the threads here. We notice there's quite a bit of manufacturing variability so that sometimes the threads will pull through if you tighten them too much. When we assembled your case, we used calibrated torque wrenches or torch screwdrivers to keep from, from pulling through because the unfortunately the difference between uh, tight and too tight is really, really, really small. But once you have the case open, you're going to find a speaker that plugs into the lowest port only, the little uh, button array. This is all of your, your volume and whatnot. And then this is the switch thing. And I'll show you how to put all those back on here in a second too. Boondock Echo comes in two pieces. The first, and for those of you wondering why we use micro, um, micro USB ports is this is an open source project all in itself. It's an open source project all by itself. And if you don't want to buy a full Boondock Echo and you just want to record only, you can actually just buy this and build your own attenuation circuit. Um, I'm going to go to a close up view. So this board was not designed by Boondock Technologies. This was by AI Thinker. Um, anyhow, the next board is an add-on that we used. And this gives us a variety of things. It gives us indicator lights. It gives us some attenuation circuits. And it also gives us um, you know, our push to talk circuit. So that when we do want to transmit, that we can short the shield together um, be on the, the Kenwood K1 cable and that we can act, actually transmit. All right. So just a quick review, a quick recap. The Boondock Echo is two boards. One is the open source AI Thinker. And the second is the attenuation and indicator light board. On the back side of this board is a little switch that lets you bypass the attenuation circuit. And you use that when you have very, very low levels of line in. Um, if you do take this apart, just something to keep in mind on this ribbon cable. Uh, let me go to a, a close-up view. On the ribbon cable on the right here, the little notch, the polarized notch goes up. That's really your only option. And on the ribbon cable on the left, the ribbon notch goes down. So it looks something like this. So pin one left, pin one right type thing. Cool. All right, let's get this bad boy put back together. So this takes a little bit of dexterity and a little bit of, of practice and trial and error. Your switch is going to go with the switch side or the open side down on the bottom. Your speaker gets plugged into the bottom hole, the bottom speaker port. Make sure that as best as you can, you seat your buttons in there. And when I was assembling these, the way that I would typically do it would be I would hold the switch in place with my left hand and I would rotate it over with my right. You should be able to have everything click, all the buttons click. And then again, when you put these things back in, the most torque that you typically want to use is about 5.5 Newton meters. And the easiest way to accomplish that is with a calibrated torque device, torque wrench of some sort. You can, I would say 90% of the time, do it by feel. Uh, but with manufacturing variability, not all of the screw holes were the same diameter. It, it was pretty inconsistent, um, actually. So it's that last 10% where going from tight to stripped is really way, way, way too close.